Diplodocus is a genus of diplodocid sauropod dinosaurs, whose fossils were first discovered in 1877 by S. W. Williston. The generic name, coined by Othniel Charles Marsh in 1878, is a Neo-Latin term derived from Greek D. P. Diplos, double, and D. Docos, beam in reference to the double-beamed chevron bones located in the underside of the tail, which were then considered unique. Among the best-known sauropods, Diplodocus were very large, long-necked, quadrupedal animals, with long, whip-like tails. Their forelimbs were slightly shorter than their hind limbs, resulting in a largely horizontal posture. The skeletal structure of these long-necked, long-tailed animals supported by four sturdy legs have been compared with suspension bridges. In fact, D. Carnegie is currently one of the longest dinosaurs known from a complete skeleton with a total length of 24 to 26 meters, 79 to 85 feet. Modern mass estimates for D. Carnegie have tended to be in the 12-14.8 metric ton, 13.2-16.3 short ton, range. D. Halorum, known from partial remains, was even larger, and is estimated to have been the size of four elephants. When first described in 1991, Discover David Gillette calculated it may have been up to 52 meters, 171 feet, long, making it the longest known dinosaur, excluding those known from exceedingly poor remains, such as Amphicolius or Maracunosaurus. Some weight estimates of the time ranged as high as 113 metric tons, 125 short tons. The estimated length was later revised downward to 33-33.5 m, 108 to 110 feet, and later on to 29 to 32 m, 95 to 105 feet, based on findings that show that Gillette had originally misplaced vertebrae 12 to 19 as vertebrae 20 to 27. According to Gregory S. Paul, a 29 meters, 95 feet, long D. Halorum weighs 23 metric tons, 25 short tons, in body mass. The nearly complete D. Carnegie skeleton at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on which size estimates of D. Halorum are mainly based, also was found to have had its 13th tail vertebra come from another dinosaur, throwing off size estimates for D. Halorum even further. While dinosaurs such as Supersaurus were probably longer, fossil remains of these animals are only fragmentary. Diplodocus had an extremely long tail composed of about 80 caudal vertebrae, 18 which are almost double the number some of the earlier sauropods had in their tails such as Shunosaurus with 43, and far more than contemporaneous Macronarians had, such as Camarasaurus with 53. Some speculation exists as to whether it may have had a defensive or noise-making, by cracking it like a coach whip, or, as more recently suggested, tactile function. The tail may have served as a counterbalance for the neck. The middle part of the tail had double beams oddly shaped chevron bones on the underside, which gave Diplodocus its name. They may have provided support for the vertebrae, or perhaps prevented the blood vessels from being crushed if the animal's heavy tail pressed against the ground. These double beams are also seen in some related dinosaurs. Chevron bones of this particular form were initially believed to be unique to Diplodocus. Since then they have been discovered in other members of the diplodocid family as well as in non-diplodocid sauropods, such as like other sauropods, the manus, front feet of diplodocus were highly modified, with the finger and hand bones arranged into a vertical column, horseshoe shaped in cross section. Diplodocus lacked claws on all but one digit of the front limb, and this claw was unusually large relative to other sauropods, flattened from side to side and detached from the bones of the hand. The function of this unusually specialized claw is unknown. No skull has ever been found that can be confidently said to belong to Diplodocus, though skulls of other Diplodocids closely related to Diplodocus, such as Galeomopus, are well known. The skulls of Diplodocids were very small compared with the size of these animals. Diplodocus had small peg-like teeth that pointed forward and were only present in the anterior sections of the jaws. Its brain case was small. The neck was composed of at least 15 vertebrae and may have been held parallel to the ground and unable to be elevated much past horizontal place.